Welcome you Taphophiles. This is my last day in Indianapolis. We're at Crown Hill Cemetery. Let's get inside and find some famous graves. I just noticed this. They got their entire family tree on a headstone. I've never seen this before. I've done over 2,000 grave visits. I think I'm at 2,100. First time I've seen a family tree. No pun intended. Thank you, Cam, for sending me this picture, making it a little easier in finding our first grave location here at Crown Hill. We're walking up on the resting place of Anthony Caritzas. Quite an interesting story. February the 10th, 1977, one day before my 18th birthday, the story is he goes to his mortgage company, he wraps a dead man's noose around uh, the banker, the banker's name was Richard Hall. He does this and uh, puts a gun to the back of his neck, marches him through downtown Indianapolis because he thought Richard Hall was taken advantage by foreclosing on his property, his commercial property, so that he can sell the land to Standard Grocery. Richard Hall is taken hostage in his own mortgage company and marched down the streets of Indianapolis in 1977. As Hall slips, an excited rookie draws his gun. A seasoned veteran motions him to holster it. He holds him hostage for 63 hours, if you can just imagine. Also, it goes before three live networks. You got to remember, 1977, there were basically uh, three major networks. He goes before the cameras and uh, reads <laughs> all kinds of crazy stuff. To all you people who are watching on television, Thank you for taking such a... We interrupt our regular program schedule to bring you the following special report from ABC News. Turn the goddamn cameras on. I'm going to show you something. Read that, pal. Read it. Turn the cameras on all three you hold it. I want on national television. I've been called a kidnapper, an extortionist, a thug, and everything else. I want it on all three national channels. I've got friends all over the country. You read it. February 10th. Okay, listen a little, Tony. Where are the cameras? I want them to see this guy. Marsh. This possible lessee was very interested in the Caritza site. We also showed them, we also showed them other sites. It is our understanding that Marsh built on another site which we had nothing to do with. That's because they couldn't steal them. Number three, Standard Grocery was very interested in the Caritza site. We showed them other sites. Number four, restaurant. This was presented, was presented to us and was potentially a good business deal, but we found it impossible to agree on terms satisfactory to our best interest, their best interest. I went up there to borrow money to build a 10,000-foot restaurant that would have grossed between a million and two million bucks a year, and these motherfuckers shop it to somebody else. I had a lessee who guaranteed me $100,000 a year rent 
was 10% over a million dollars, and I could have built the building for 220,000 bucks and put $100,000 worth of equipment in it. The way this ended was after the prosecutors agreed to drop all charges, the Hall Group agreed to forgive the mortgage on a commercial property. Tony cuts Mr. Hall loose. He immediately shoots the gun in the air to prove it was loaded. At this moment, the Indiana State Police and Indianapolis Police Department handcuff Tony and arrest him. And it turns out they were, I guess, basically said, we're just kidding, we're not going to drop charges, and you got to pay the mortgage on this land. But he has prosecuted, he's found not guilty by reason of insanity. He's given 11 years in the loony bin, gets out a free man, lives until January 28th, 2003. Probably in the very near future, I'll do an entire video on this because I think it'd be interesting. I probably shouldn't have said loony bin, but he did serve 11 years in a mental hospital. Now we're at the north side of the cemetery. This is the location of the Jackson family. Very well to do here in Indianapolis. Lafayette Jackson is the founder of Standard Grocery. After his death in 1931, Chester, his son, becomes the president of the company. After his death in 1970, he leaves the fortune to his wife, Marjorie Jackson, and that's who we're here to see today. Uh, please note, she dies 1977. Now this goes hand in hand with Tony Caritza's story, who we were just visiting with. I mentioned that, uh, and also uh, Tony mentions in the news conference that Standard Grocery was interested in purchasing his commercial property, and they were going to pay cash. Well, this would be Marjorie Jackson. What happens is two bad guys, uh, gets wind of the press conference. They look Marjorie up. They break into her home. Still millions. Millions. Then he, they shoot her with a 22 in the stomach. She bleeds to death. They start the house on fire to cover up their evidence. However, the fire smoldered out. When detectives and police arrive at the scene, they find 50 loaves of bread very interesting. 50 loaves of bread, 150 pounds of coffee, 200 dozen cookies. These were all wrapped up and uh, she had a Christmas tree uh, up that she left year round and it was, uh, she wrote, To God from Marjorie. Also under the Christmas tree was one million dollars in cash that was tagged under the Christmas tree, wrapped up Merry Christmas, Jesus, to Jesus from Marjorie. Also like to mention that in May of 1977, I was assistant manager of Standard Grocer in Crawfordsville. May the 8th, I'm heading to Indianapolis to a store meeting when I heard the news on the radio. I had still fresh in my memory. You can still hear the Juneteenth music in the background. This is a grave of Eli Lilly. He's a colonel in the Civil War. In 1876, he builds a laboratory in Indianapolis manufacturing ethical drugs. That means you have to uh, get them through a prescription from a doctor. He was the first to develop insulin. This is 1923. 1940s, they developed penicillin. 1960s antibiotics and cancer drugs. During the Great Depression, they kept every employee and kept them on the payroll doing maintenance around the building. The music is coming from right over there. Well, have you heard of the Gatlin gun? Is it Gatlin or Gatling? It was developed by Dr. Richard Gatling. 
It's a rapid firing multiple barrel firearm. It was the forerunner to the machine gun. It was first used during the Civil War. Twelve were purchased by the Union Army. You can just imagine the surprise when that's first used. Dr. Galling developed it because he wanted to have smaller armies, thus less casualties. Close by is Roger Brown. He was a basketball player for the Indiana Pacers. This is back with the ABA. Before ABA and NBA merged, you may remember that they used the red, white, and blue basketball. ABA was a very entertaining league. They were first to establish the three-pointer. And again, I like the red, white, and blue ball. Roger Brown was my favorite basketball player. This is pre-Larry Bird days. He also makes the Hall of Fame. It took Roger Brown many years to get his chance in pro basketball, but in a very short time, Brown has established himself as one of the game's truly outstanding players. High scoring wizard Roger Brown. He's the threat all the time. Called by some the new Elgin Baylor, Brown is the toughest player in the ABA one-on-one. -on -one. His moves mesmerize the opposition. The three-point home run attempt. It's good. Watch this fake by Roger Brown. It leaves Willie Wise watching from the floor. Oh, that Roger Brown. By him tightening the drive, stay back, and he hits the three-pointer. Roger Brown shooting and depth passing led the way for Indiana. He dies too young of liver disease. The Pacers had some championship teams in the 70s, early 70s. Next stop is a retail giant that started here in Indianapolis, Ayers. You may uh, recognize the name L.S. Ayers, Airway. This is pre-Walmart days and Target. Uh, let's get this picked up. They started out with a downtown store selling clothing, footwear, jewelry, and housewares. This is the original store. I like the clock here. Here I want to splice this in. This is a downtown Indianapolis, Monument Circle. Indianapolis is also known as Circle City. Right here is the state capitol building of Indiana. But I want to show you, this here is the original L.S. Ayers building, located downtown Meridian in Washington. And I want to show you that the clock is still there. I love doing this stuff. I love history. I like before and after pictures, too. Right here she is. Interestingly, it's got two different times. So one of them, <laughs> which side is incorrect? Later, they went into uh, malls trying to have a success there, but sadly defunct on 9906 after being in business for 152 years. We're now at the grave of President Benjamin Harrison. This will be the fifth presidential grave I visited. Most recently was Ronald Reagan in Simi Valley, California. Harrison serves as the 23rd United States President. He is a grandson of William Henry Harrison, who was the ninth president. How many knew this? 
He works as a lawyer and a publicist before winning the White House. He is a Republican who defeated Grover Cleveland, but would lose his re-election bid to Grover Cleveland. He loses the popular vote, but he wins the electoral vote. That's how he got into the White House. I think that'll do it on this one. Everybody needs to be remembered, and happy trails, everyone.